There is a long list of influential people who have shaped and molded the field of psychology. Some work directly in the field for their entire professional career, like Sigmund Freud, while others just happen to come into the field because they had made discoveries linked to the science, like Ivan Pavlov. Today at Learning the Social Sciences, we are going to dive in and learn about some of the influential individuals who have contributed to the field of psychology. Wilhelm Wundt is known as the father of psychology, as he was the first to open a laboratory dedicated solely to the study of the mind and behavior in 1879. His laboratory in Leipzig, Germany separated psychology from philosophy and medicine as he conducted his experiments in a controlled setting following the scientific method. He examined the human consciousness, perceptions, sensations, and feelings related to behavior. He felt that approaching a problem from numerous angles would assist in figuring out the question. His students commented that he used a holistic approach. One of the approaches he also used was introspection or the observation of someone's mental processes. He would show a picture or play a sound and have the students describe what they heard or saw in detail. He used this to try to understand their consciousness at a primary level. During another experiment, he timed people's physical reactions to a stimulus, like how fast did it take them to move their hands? This was done to see their mental process in action. Next on our list is William James. William James was the first major American psychologist. He taught the first psychology course and is known as the father of American psychology. He followed the functionalist approach as he felt that the environment impacted behavior. He also came up with the James Lang theory of emotion, which states that one witnesses an external stimulus, like seeing a snake, which then leads to a physiological response, like having your heart rate increase or your eyes get bigger. At that, one concludes that they are afraid of the snake based on the physical reaction. As the theory states, one's response is dependent on how one interprets their physical response. Finally, he is associated with pragmatism, where we focus on, you know, the usefulness of a concept or idea as the truth of it may never be proven. Mary Whitten Calkins was the first female president of the American Psychological Association. She earned a PhD in psychology from Harvard, but was not given the degree because she was a woman. So she doesn't go down as being the first to have a PhD in the field. She taught at Wellesley College and published over 100 papers on psychological and philosophical topics. She studied self-psychology and invented the paired association technique that involved memory and recollections by pairing colors and numerals together. Unfortunately, Edward B. Titchener claimed credit for her discovery and the work within the field. However, she is still known as the first female president of the APA. Although Charles Darwin was not a psychologist, he did influence the study of psychology based on his concept of natural selection and evolution. Evolutionary psychologists provide information to all perspectives within psychology, like with looking at physiological and psychological adaptations that one may make based on survival or reproduction, and that relates directly to the study of psychology. John B. Watson helped to develop behaviorism as he pushed for psychologists to look at observable behaviors. He worked with conditioning and is noted for his Little Albert experiment, where he conditioned a baby to fear a furry white rabbit and other similar objects like a dog. He conditioned the fear by striking metal together when the rabbit was placed in front of little Albert, causing him to cry and elicit a fear response. This, of course, today is an unethical study and should not be replicated. 
Dorothea Dix dedicated her life to help the mentally ill gain better living conditions and receive proper treatment. It all started in 1841 when Dix taught Sunday school to prisoners at the Women's East Cambridge Jail. When she arrived, she found the conditions to be absolutely horrendous. And she also discovered that some of the prisoners that were there were not criminals. They were simply there because they suffered from mental illness. Dix traveled to other prisons and jails to see if they operated similarly, and she discovered that they did. She then dedicated her life to improve the treatment of people who suffer from mental illness and also to improve the facilities where people were that suffered from mental illness. She visited with psychiatrists to gain more knowledge in the field, which helped her to make improvements in New York, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. And from there, those improvements would spread nationwide. She pushed for social reforms throughout her life until she passed away at the age of 85. G. Stanley Hall had a list of firsts. He was the first president of the American Psychological Association. He was the first person from the United States to earn a PhD in psychology. And he founded the first American psychological laboratory at Johns Hopkins University. He worked within evolutionary psychology and child development. Unfortunately, he was also involved with the eugenics movement, which has been discredited as it is unscientific. Sigmund Freud was the founder of psychoanalysis and created different theories to explain human behavior. Some of his theories are still practiced today, while others are wrong and have been disproven. But these debunked theories still come up in various other subject areas, so it is still good to know a little about them. Freud brought the unconscious mind to the mainstream and is known for his concept of the id, ego, and superego. He proposed defense mechanisms and had talk therapy or the psychoanalytic therapy approach. Although therapy has grown since then, there are still some Freudian therapists out there. Ivan Pavlov. Do you hear the bell ringing? Ivan Pavlov was researching digestion when he came upon a breakthrough in psychology involving classical conditioning. When he fed his dogs, he noted that they salivated when putting on the harness that collected the saliva. They didn't wait for the food to arrive to begin to salivate. So he then decided to ring a bell before feeding the dogs. Sure enough, they learned to associate the bell ring with incoming food and thus salivated. This is classical conditioning, and it involves an uncontrolled stimulus, or the food that was given, an unconditioned response, known here as the dog salivating, a neutral stimulus, or the tone or bell, a conditioned stimulus, or the change of the tone, or a bell that now elicits a conditioned response, or the dog to salivate for the bell instead of food. Jean Piaget created the stages of cognitive development to explain one's thinkings and abilities at various points of their lives. The sensory motor stage is from birth to age two, and it is the time where infants learn to grasp and to discover the world around them. They also learn object permanence and that objects exist when not seen. Next is the pre-operational stage, when one starts to think symbolically and use pictures to explain objects, yet their thinking is still primarily concrete and they display egocentrism. The third stage is the concrete operational stage that lasts from ages 7 to 11. Their thinking is more organized and they understand conservation, like when you pour a glass of water into one glass but then move it to a skinnier and taller glass that the amount actually stays the same. Finally comes the formal operational stage that starts around the age of 12. This is when abstract thinking and deductive logic comes into play. Piaget stages have been popular within developmental psychology, even with some critiques to it. Carl Rogers proposed that people have one major push or motive in life, and that is to self-actualize or to fulfill one's potential. 
Rogers stated that for people to grow, they needed to be in an environment that provided genuineness, acceptance, and empathy. He was from the humanistic perspective and also added in components for therapists to utilize. He is also often referred to alongside Abraham Maslow. B.F. Skinner worked in the field of behaviorism and is known for his studies involving operant conditioning. With operant conditioning, a behavior is reinforced with items like a reward, and thus the behavior will happen more frequently. On the other hand, if the behavior is punished, it will be less frequent. His Skinner box, which would feed a rat or a pigeon food when they performed a certain behavior like pressing or pecking at a button, assisted him with having a controlled environment to study operant conditioning. Margaret Floyd Washburn earned her PhD in psychology from Harvard in 1894, meaning she was the first woman to receive a doctorate in psychology. She was an expert in animal behavior and also worked with sensation and perception. She proposed a motor theory that stated that one's thoughts could be observed with one's bodily movements. She also was the second woman to serve as president of the American Psychological Association. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation on the influential figures within psychology. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And also remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.